So when we run the sifter, um, this is an industrial sifter. I think I had it quoted recently. It's about a $70,000 sifter, and it is not the bottleneck in our process whatsoever. This thing can handle as much as we can give it. This thing's meant to go to, like, general mills or something. But what it does is it's got a screen on the inside that is stationary, and the paddles are on the inside, and those move and rotate on the shaft. So there's a shaft right here. And up at the top, you can see there's an auger feeding it, and there's an auger that feeds all the sugar into the center of that screen. Anything that doesn't fit through the screen will come out this, and this is called oversize. So anything that is not appropriate size for our customer and our spec comes right out here, and we catch it in a five-gallon pail. And that is what Jonathan and I need to grind up today so we can run it through this sifter without rejection. So that's what we need to do. It's a pile and we're gonna get it done so we can be done with sugar on Monday until the next time we run. Uh, we run sugar about uh, one week a month at this point. And uh, yeah, that's good. That's good enough for us right now. And uh, we can take on more if we need to, but uh, yeah, I think we're in good shape. Doing pretty good. Done one bucket, two, one. Okay. This is how you know how many you've done. Line them up. I brought you water. This is what he's doing with the fines. Then we're going to take this and we're going to run it in the ribbon blender to make it uniform. And the lab will get a uh, moisture measurement on it so we know what the whole blend of the oversize will be. And then we'll actually probably blend that in with Monday's production. So it's probably going to be good enough to just box, but we like um, making sure that every batch is really uniform. Because if you're in manufacturing, one slight change can change everything. So we want our customer to get the same thing every time. So we just won't feed. I'm not going to make case into this because it probably would be different than what we make it. Because this is the reject from the sifter. We're going to feed that in our production over time. So it's in every batch, just in a small amount. I hope that makes sense. Okay, this baby was filled to the brim. Was it working right at the end there? Yeah. No? Yeah. No? Right. There's still some in there. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. So how many pails is this? One. That's one pail? That was one, yeah. Wow, it got fluffier. I don't know. Wow. Well, I have a feeling it's going to clean itself out here. Maybe you fixed the switch somehow. You can know. fix the switch? I thought I thought it works. Try it. Won't stay in. Our uh, switch is broken. It broke like after the first day. Somehow it stayed on when John removed our wrench. On, so we made our own switch. Got a switch bracket, switch holder. I don't know, but it's high tech. I'll show you. Oh, you hit the, uh oh, your wrench. Gotta kind of wedge it against the leg. If you put this end up, put that end up. It works better. But there you go. There you go. Now you've been trained on the grinder switch. You feed me? Yeah. No, buddy. Three buckets down. 21 more to go. While you're dumping one, you could be it's, letting one grind. It's smaller. It's all right. Does it fit? Yeah. 
so you don't have to stop when you dump. I don't know. I don't know Do the same thing. Over. Yeah, you're losing like seconds here. Minutes. Yeah, I don't know if it's faster. If it was the same size bucket, maybe. It is the same. That's six and six point six and five. So at least you know you can do it. Nice, man. Fluffy stuff. Feels good. Pretty full, dude. How's that thing even working when he got fucked like that? Look at that. Great, so, so much heat smoking. Set it on that bucket. That was quick. 40 pounds in my rear. <laughs> That's good, you're starting to notice the sound of your machinery. How would you describe that sound? A dying cat? Sure. Here are the bolts. Here are the bolts. You're good. It's easier to go in a full circle. Good. Feel it. Feel it with your finger. Yep, you're good. You're over halfway, dude. What are you doing? Getting the sugar off of it. It's pretty good. That's all you did? Yeah. Just moved it back and forth in hot water. Yeah. No kidding. Go. It's good. All right. Barely run. What are you talking about? This thing has gone through all those pails. It's dying. No, it's gonna get the last six. You do you doubt the ever grow, every grow? A little bit.
Um, you can just set it upside down on that shelf. Right. Down below. Last bucket. That's it, dude. That's it. So we just finished up. Uh, Jonathan and I processed, I don't know, probably darn near 1,000 pounds, 1,200 pounds of maple sugar today. That little every grow, you thought I was going to die. What, the thing? The little know, grinder? Sign, sign, sign like it was going to, but it was... I had faith. And it just goes to show you. Sometimes you don't have to spend a lot of money. That was 130 bucks. Yeah, it's probably jacked up, though. <laughs> Baby. But... We made $8,000 worth of sugar today. Jonathan got holiday pay. He definitely earned, he earned like $12.50 today. All that sugar that we did. Yeah. Yep. And it goes to show you that there's not much you can't accomplish when you've got Jonathan. <laughs> I'm trying to film. God, I don't need you sneezing. Let me start over. Just goes to show you there's not much you can't accomplish when you have a Jonathan. <laughs> Doing it on purpose? No, 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 no. It just goes to show you that there's not much you can't accomplish when you have a Jonathan Molnir and a 5 8 inch wrench holding your power button. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you in the next episode.